journey where we came from, where I came from. Um, it's so hard to believe that this is actually happening today. I'm so grateful. Uh, being from Chicago, uh, being a fan, Chicago sports fan my whole life, uh, my lifetime. I've got to see every one of our teams win a championship, the 1985-86 Bears. My 2005 Chicago White Sox, the good old boys on the south side. My North Siders on the Cubs, 2016. We all saw what the Bulls did in the 90s. Too many championships are repeat the years, but what a crazy run that was and a crazy time for the city. And then to follow what the Chicago Blackhawks did from 2010. Three Stanley Cups, and I was there loving every minute of it. There's something really special about this recognition, and hopefully by the time I'm done speaking, you're gonna understand how much I love the city of Chicago, the Chicago Blackhawks, my teammates, the fans, my friends, and most of all, my family. The most unique thing here for me, thinking about this, is when I first found out that I was gonna get my jersey retired, that I'm only one of two Chicago-born athletes to have their jersey retired in their hometown. And it just so happened that he was one of my childhood heroes. Dick Buckus. He was the epitome of the south side of Chicago. Big, mean, tough. And they say, be careful when you meet your heroes. Sometimes they're disappointed, but he didn't disappoint. I've known Dick for 20 years and his wife Helen and their kids. Um, just an amazing person, and I was honored to be a friend to him. And this is a crazy story that happened just this morning. You're going to think I'm not telling the truth. I'm known for taking that sauna, right? And you take saunas all the time. So this morning I go take my sauna at Red Square, the Russian bathhouse over on Division Street. And as I'm checking in, there's these two big guys standing at the front desk. And there's no word to lie. One of them turns around and I was looking, I was looking at a ghost. And I kind of looked at my eyes. I think my heart just dropped. And the other kid turns around, he's even bigger. It's Dick Butkus' nephews, Luke and Zach Butkus. So if that's not a sign from Dick, I don't know what is. That's crazy. I've had the opportunity to represent my country numerous times. Um, before the four Olympics, right? So I would pass that out. Uh, but it was always an honor, and most of all because I was representing the city of Chicago and the Blackhawks also. There's all kinds of great athletes that came out of Chicago, Illinois. And I've always cheered for them, always pulled for them, just like you did as a U.S. Olympian. There's one that comes to mind. I want to talk about Eddie Olchek as we came up together and played the 84 team. Eddie, I love you and your family. The other one, I thought I would, she should be here. And on short notice, flew in from Vancouver, down to the Grove, Illinois, Cammie Granado from the Granado family. I've been friends with the Granado family since 1984-85, and obviously playing with their brother Tony. Cammy is arguably, arguably the best woman hockey player ever to play the game. There's one thing for sure, she's the best ever from Illinois. God bless her, Cammy. I love you, thank you. So I've never been the kind of guy who looked before he leaves or leap, I should say. Never worried about consequences. Never liked to lose, hated failure, but it didn't bother me. I just looked ahead. I never looked at yesterday. Always what was next. So I think that was one of my strongest virtues. Um, as a kid growing up in Chicago, I didn't have any expectations of becoming a professional hockey player. It just wasn't the thing back then. There's only, I believe, six or seven NHL players from the States. And uh, I played it because I loved it. You know, that's all it was. I just loved skating, uh, never thought about it. I didn't even know the path that it took. But once I found out that it might be a reality later in my years, I was all in. I threw everything I had at it. I, I worked as hard as I could. So many breaks, so much luck. 
and the faith, whatever you want to call it, I ended up here today, and it's amazing. I can't, still can't believe I'm making the speech, quite honestly. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Chicago shaped me to be who I am today. Born and raised on the South Side, you taught to be humble. You taught to be respectful. Everybody was hardworking. And speaking of hard work, I'll just take a second. I want to thank all the policemen and women, firemen, first responders, for putting your lives on the line for us each and every day to protect this city. Your hard work doesn't go unnoticed. As I mentioned, I was the smallest kid really in my class, on my teams. But as I got older, people would always remind me that you don't have a chance to go anywhere. You're too small. Teammates. Uh, for one second there, my dad actually told me you better go to school, get a college degree, because you don't have much of a chance of continuing a career and making a living at it. But it all started. Mom. Mom sneaks behind dad's back. We go to Ace Hardware. We buy a $5 pair of skates. Two sizes too big, so we saved a little money. My wore them for like two years, stuffed them with socks, start skating on some outdoor arena about five blocks from the house. It used to be a, a basketball court in the summers, and then they called it Candy Cane Park. They painted it red and white in the wintertime, and that's where I skated the fire and flood the park. And I bounced around on that thing, and sooner or later, my dad probably said, you know, he looks like he likes it a lot. So nobody from that neighborhood, first of all, because of the cost, you know, it was expensive to play hockey even back then, so my dad just ran into a little good fortune at the time, so he bought me the best pair of skates. He bought me the best equipment, put me on a team. Obviously, the rest was history. So I grew up to play for first team was in Willow Springs, the Stingrays, where I attended a Dennis Hall hockey school, of all things, where all the Blackhawks were our, our teachers and on the ice, and I got the bug. I got to see Bobby Hall, Stan Makita, Tony Esposito, and that's where I just, uh, I just fell in love more with the Hawks. And my dad had taken me to the games as a child to see them, and I actually got to meet them. I've continued to play for teams, the St. Jude Knights on the south side. Yeah, there's a bunch of St. Jude Knights there. A bunch of guys from the caravan are here, Mount Carmel Caravan, right? And I can't thank these guys enough for all the support they've given me. I just hope, like you guys, they feel like they got a piece of this. They get a piece of me because in some way, I'll drop some names tonight, some famous, some not, but all of them had played some big role in me getting to here today. There's no question about that. I finished off, I remember Pat telling that story about when I won the state championship and the Kennedy Cup on the same day. That was one heck of a day. I don't think anybody's ever done that, but I did have two other teammates that had to do the same thing. Uh, Mike Skrzynski and Mike Getty had to take that long trip to Waukegan from home at Flossmoor to accomplish that task. The sad day when I moved from Chicago at 15, right, Mom, we packed up. Who knows why, Dad had another bad deal in restaurants, right? And that way, <laughs> that didn't go too good. So my dad ends up moving to San Diego, and I thought, that's it. You know, that's probably it for my hockey career. And, you know, I just, it, it didn't matter to me. I, I started surfing. You know, I actually started to move, doing better in school. It was something that, you know, I never looked back, like I said, and all of a sudden that day hit. I ran into a kid on a beach, and he's right here with me today. He's been with me since the beginning. His name's Bobby Parker. So, Bobby Parker, stand up, man, please. I wasn't playing hockey at the time, and I ran into Bobby on the beach, and he said, listen, you're pretty good, but why don't you take this phone number and this coach up at Moose Jaw? You know, maybe he'll give you a tryout. He did, and the rest was history. So, unbelievable right place at the right time with Bobby. And then Bobby actually went back to end up being my partner for a couple of years. So, amazing. Okay, I'll go fast forward here. I think my, my, my career was so long, it's, I'm trying to shorten this. I'm looking at the clock here, too. It's at 6 minutes and 33 seconds, so I'm doing okay. After Rusha, I went on to play two years in Wisconsin. And I picked Wisconsin. Matt, we got some Badgers in the crowd, right? And I simply picked Wisconsin because it was closest to Chicago. That's a God's truth. It's an easy trip for my friends. I continued on to play for the 84 Olympic team and then turned pro. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Montreal because the team I broke in with, and I 
the Molson family is more than generous throughout my whole career there. The day I was trained in Chicago was the greatest day of my life. The summer of 1991, I got that phone call from Sir Savard. It was the shortest phone call you could ever imagine. I my heart dropped when he said I was traded, but he continued to say, but I traded you home to Chicago. I hung up that phone. I called my mom and dad out in San Diego. Let's go, you guys. We're moving back home. So in two weeks, three weeks, we're back in Chicago. Mom and dad caught that first opening game against the Rangers. Unbelievable. It, it, just, it was a dream come true, a team you grow up watching, and all of a sudden, I'm walking up those stairs the old stadium, and I'm stepping on the ice. And those 90s were unbelievable. The, the city was on fire, and I'll get to the Bulls later, but it was amazing. My first year here, we had an all-star game. You know, just a stroke of luck, and we have the 91 all-star game, and playing in front of the hometown crowd, the Gulf War was exciting, the passion, the emotion, the flags. And I think that's where Chicago, Wayne Messmer made their mark throughout the NHL and the country, what Chicago was all about. And that old stadium just had a special thing about it. I sit here and look to the right of some of my teammates, guys we battle with. I love when Eddie walked in today and they start chanting that name again, Eddie. Never forget that in the 90s, that old stadium. But JR, Tony, Savvy, all these guys, Carnes. I would have everybody out here if I could that I played with on the Blackhawks. They told me I could only have so many chairs, so this is the way it ended up. But thank you guys for being there. You're a great honor to play with. We were going head to head that year with the Bulls. Every other night it seemed like we were playing, we were winning, we were on an 11 game win streak that year in the playoffs. Mr. Wirtz, Bill Wirtz, hated that. You wanted more games, you wanted tickets, you wanted, but we were sweeping everybody, so it was just going so fast. And that, of course, feeding off the Bulls, watching them win championships, it made me hungrier, it made our teammates hungrier, but it had a little bit of a special war for me because I was from Chicago and watching my home team city of the Bulls, you know, win those championships. And then we go to, of course, Michael Jordan, who became a dear friend of mine. Without a doubt, the king. I met Michael that same summer, 1991, at a, a White Sox game. And we hit it off right from the start. And like that old phrase they use, I want to be like Mike. Well, I really did want to be like Mike. I drank what he drank. And I'm not talking about the Gatorade. I ate what he ate, and one thing I did, which I hadn't done in my previously in my career, was train properly. And I, I just watched him after every game with, I think it was Tim Grove, who was his, his trainer. And I thought to myself, well, if Mike Dell's got a trainer, that might be my edge, I'll be the trainer. So I saw a guy in the gym in 1993-94 training some other hockey player, and I just kind of walked over and introduced myself, T.R. Goodman. TR challenged me from 1993 to 2010 when I retired. Early mornings, you know, driving up that coast. I couldn't wait to see TR because I wanted to challenge him as much as I, he challenged me. And I said love, hate at the Hall of Fame thing. And I didn't even think it was the wrong phrase. He corrected me there. I don't know why. I still don't know why. But like I said, he was exactly what I needed. Yeah, he trained my kids when they rolled up. Um, and TR, I want to thank you. That's the reason why I lasted as long as I did. TR, thank you very much for everything. We talk about the Bulls. Lastly, there was another element that came in which gave this team, I'd just say, a little more character on the court and off the court. He's here to support me today also. His name's Dennis Rodman. Thank you, Dennis. I still love you, Dennis. And incidentally, if it wasn't for Dennis, I would have never met any better. I used to chase Dennis all over town at night. And we all went one night, late night, 
and me and Eddie got, ended up in the same room, and the rest was history. We'll get to that. Okay, then the sad part came. I got traded. I'll, I'll say to the, I won't say the enemy. Let, I'll give it to him. Yeah, go ahead, give it to him. I'm sorry, Danny. <laughs> but it didn't matter. All the years I was playing for Detroit, I still was loyal to the Blackhawks. I won't say that word again, I promise. I'll use Mitch Janders. It's a little... Yeah. But all those years, I still remained a Blackhawk. And in 2010, every fan, including myself, their wishes came true, winning their first Stanley Cup since 1961. A few of those key players are here today. Duncan Keith. Patrick Sharp. Marion Hosa. And my favorite, Ren Seabrook, the old number seven. I'll never forget the day Ren Seabrook called me and asked if he could wear my number. So I'm thinking to myself, geez, I don't know this kid, but what the hell? I'll let him wear it. And I'm glad I did. What a career Steve's had, leading that team to three Stanley Cups. He did it all, Steve's. I could have been prouder. Big hits, big goals, making plays. One hit that comes to mind which I think turned the series around, is when he absolutely crushed Bacchus and put him in La La Land. And in closing on Steve's, he made one more call about three, four weeks ago, asking for tickets to Taylor Swift for his wife and his kids. As if I didn't have enough on my plate, Steve's, but thanks, love you. While we're on the subject of great ones from that era, I gotta include him. This guy will go down as the greatest American born player. Kaner, Patrick Kane, unbelievable. That jersey looks kind of funny, Kane. You're big row on you. And don't worry, it'll work out in the end. He'll be standing here, same as me. But just be careful, don't go stealing my thunder today, okay? I got money on the board to shut you down. All right, this was, no one's done this before. Blackhawks do things they do in style. When they, I just thought I was going to another Pearl Jam concert last September, September 7th. Been a thousand of these Pearl Jam concerts. And I had a very, real special bond with Eddie, especially in the band members. They motivated me. They got their big break. 91, I believe it was their first album came out. 90, 91 was my first year back with Chicago. So it was just fitting. They pulled me on stage. And as they're 
and he's speaking. I don't hear anything because I'm so nervous. I just want to get off that stage. I don't, you know, I want nothing to do. I just had, you know, a couple drinks and I'm just looking forward to a Pearl Jam concert. But anyway, as he starts speaking, he's actually talking to the crowd, but whispering to me to just stay here. And he kept grabbing my arm. I'm trying to get away. So finally, I'm such a knucklehead, he grabs me and says, hey, look at the monitor. So I, you know, I look back, I take a couple steps forward, and they're showing highlights of me. I go, wow, that's pretty cool. Pearl Jam's showing some highlights of my hockey career. And not till they dropped that banner and showed my number did I realize what was happening. So that's one heck of a way to find out how your number's going to be tired. I was blown away. Now, I, I've always prided myself in, in getting his people together in leadership role. I, I think I'm a better player, a uh, party planner, than I am a hockey player. And I proved that last night to a lot of people. But Eddie was there last night with us. He's always been there for me, for my kids. Uh, I can't thank him enough for the, the, the impact he's had on me um, throughout the years. I've, we've watched each other's children grow since 1995. I don't want to put him on the spot here, but I have to because I love him so much. But, Eddie, thank you for being here. Thank you for your support all those years. Love you. So after that, like I said, I thought we were doing a tribute to Rocky. Danny was at the concert, we picked his favorite song, and then it turned into whatever happened to me, but I need to talk about the late owner Rocky words. I, I can't tell you what he's meant to me and my family. First it was his father, Bill Wirtz, that brought me back to the Blackhawks in 91, and all of Mike Keenan, who led us there, orchestrated that trade for my buddy, my teammate, my co-ambassador, it was Mr. Wirtz, Bill Wirtz, that brought me back in 91. And then years later, you know, the year before I got here, my dad had passed, and Rocky called me in his office with John McDonough and said, listen, we want you back. You're welcome back anytime. So I was so, so late, so happy that I was coming home. It was, it was just amazing that the, the, the I never wanted to be traded. No, I'm on the wrong page, I'm so sorry, but... <laughs> hey, there's gonna be a couple of hiccups here, don't worry, I'll be fine. Okay. I have to thank Bill Wirtz, Rocky, Peter, who was a dear friend, Danny, and the entire Wirtz family for making a local kid's dream come true, and for, about, for allowing me to continue being a Blackhawk. I will forever be thankful to the Wirtz family for providing me this opportunity and honoring me with this special Jersey retirement. Thank you. How's it going, Bob? Okay? All right, here. It's an honor to be going after the Raptors amongst some of the other greatest Chicago Blackhawks. Glenn Hall, Pierre Block. Keith Magnuson, the heart and soul of that Blackhawks team. Bobby Hall, the Golden Jet. Denny Savard. Stan Makita. Tony Esposito. Marion Hosa. Numbers we all know and love. All right, this will be the tough part. There's people that I wish could have been here but have passed on. You know, there's my high school coach, John Duran. I would have wished he would have been here to see this day. He, he wouldn't believe it, just like I wouldn't believe this was going to happen. Bob Prober, one of our old teammates. And let's start with the, one of the most important Dad, all right? All right, good dad and mom here, but
Greeks, they didn't write ob obituaries. When a man died, all they asked was if he had passion. And my dad had passion. He lived his life with passion. I talked about failing and, you know, failures and then bouncing back. My dad had dreams, just like a lot of people do. That crazy trip to Australia, you know, that, that was nuts. The San Diego, another one backfired. But those of you who knew him, who knew him, he would have Mr. Wirtz, Bill Wirtz and Stitches, and Rocky Wirtz and Stitches. He was a character, he was full of life. Just like I said, he was the chili bar. You know, like it or love it, that chili bar with my father and mother and my sisters running that joint, it was an unbelievable time for the fans to connect with us. And I, I felt that's what I gave back. I didn't open the rest, I opened the restaurant because we're Greek, right? Well, that's the, Greeks open the restaurants. You can ask George down at the Palace Grill, right? But yeah, I, I couldn't have asked for better parents. Um, Mom, Dad, I love you. Uh, I hope this makes up for all the problems I gave you. Know, this should be good enough, Mom. <laughs> uh, my, Penny, Lenny, Stevie, I don't, my sisters and brothers. I wasn't always there. That's the one thing I couldn't get was time. And hopefully again, in some small way, making up for that.